The clear December night sky offers ever-changing display of fascinating objects to see. Bright stars, constellations, and bright planets, often the moon, sometimes special events like meteor showers. Observing the night sky can be done with no special equipment, even though a sky map would be very useful. Binoculars or a backyard telescope will enhance some experience and bring some otherwise invisible objects into view. You can also use some astronomy app or software to make the observing easier. So when you observe in the local neighborhood or in the city, you see lots of display of lights or candles. And this is a reflection of the return of the light, which is the winter solstice. And many cultures around the world are celebrating the return of the light. And then you also notice that his shadows are nice and long in the winter solstice. And so that's the indication too that the sun is low due to the season that the earth makes its way around the sun. So let's start off talking about the meteor showers coming up and it's actually active right now. And so we have what's called the Gemini meteor shower. You go out after midnight or before sunrise, you'll see the constellation of Orion and to go to the left, you'll see the constellation of Gemini. And then you see Castor and Pollock, the bright stars of Gemini. And then above that, it's a radiant point. It's expecting to peak around December 13th and 14th. And they're estimating there's going to be about 100 meters per hour. And they're quick and they're fast. And they are the remnant from a, uh, not a comet, but an asteroid that have left behind some debris. And so you get out and can see quite a few meteors in each hour, but they go in spurts. So the meteor shower is expected to go from December 4th through the 17th. And the peak will be on the 13th and the 14th. And the, and the fun thing is, it's going to be a waning crescent moon. So that means you're going to have lots of dark skies to see the meteor shower. And then you want to circle December 21st and December 29th, in particular this year. First, we have the winter solstice occurring on December 21st at 2.02 a.m. And what that means is essentially that the North Pole is leaning away from the sun. And where we are right there, we're seeing the winter solstice at that time the sun is going to be directly over the Tropic of Capricornus. And so down in the northern southern hemisphere, they're having their summers. We're up in the northern hemisphere, we have our winter. And this is all due to the Earth tilt at 23 and a half degrees. So you notice in this map here, here we are right there, that down in the southern hemisphere, that when they have lots of daylight and very short nights, and up north, we have the long nights and short days. So that's what's associated with the winter solstice. So what does that mean for Portland? We're gonna have nearly eight hours and 42 minutes of daylight. And sunrise will be about 7.48 a.m. and sunset at 4.30 p.m. And on that day, the sun will be about 21 degrees above the southern horizon. And that means that it has only eight hours to cross the sky. It's very low, so it has no time to really heat up the air above the ground uh, during this time period. And so that's why we are seeing cooler temperature uh, for this very reason. And no wonder coffee, teas, and hot chocolate are very popular in Portland. And up north, they're experiencing what's called a polar day. I'm going to have 24 hours of darkness, and that occurs around the Arctic Circle. And then down in the south, they're going to have what's called the Midnight Sun, and that's in Antarctica. And then that's where we're going to see nearly 24 hours of daylight down in the south. Okay. So, I highly recommend that you go to this website called skymap.com. And this is a free site that you can download and print. Um, a map of the night sky and here we have the month of December and this is a very useful resource to help you learn about the night sky monthly and it shows the highlights it has had 
all the data that you can use. And so it's important you do your homework, you study the map before you go out, and then you orient yourself to the compass direction. That's the critical. Okay? Then you'll notice on the map you have north, south, east, and west. And then once you uh, look at the map, you want to hold it up above your head. Okay? So that north is pointing north and south is pointing south. And then east and west will be lined up. Okay? So that's important when you want to use any kind of map I mean, looking at the nighttime sky. Okay? And then you'll notice on the map we have the constellations, the names. And these are the bright stars that you could see within the sixth magnitude, meaning that can, our eyes can only see down to the sixth magnitude. But you have these big bright uh, circles like this, Arcturus and Vega. Those are the really bright stars. And then you come across in the constellation, these objects that have letter M and a number. M stands for Messier, which is a catalog of 110 bright objects you could see with the backyard telescope or binoculars. And so this is the list of 110 objects that is, uh, can be viewed from the backyard using the binoculars or a telescope. And they include one and only supernova, nebulous, there's the Orion Nebula M42 now, and it's visible above the uh, southern horizon in Orion. A wonderful galaxy, millions of light years away from us. We have the globular clusters, and these are clusters of stars, and, and they contain nearly half a million to a million stars in a cluster. And then we have uh, the Pleiades, the open cluster. So you can see there's a wide variety of wonderful objects you can see with the binoculars or backyard telescope. And then you want to orient yourself looking towards the north. You find the Big Dipper, before midnight, it's low above the northern horizon. Then you take the two inch stars of the bowl of the Big Dipper and follow it right up here to Polaris, which is our North Star, or called the Pole Star. It started just above the Earth's North Pole. The Earth is totally at 23 and a half degrees, so essentially it's showing you your latitude. And for Portland, it's about 45 degrees, essentially halfway up the sky. And that also means that we're 45 degrees from the Earth's equator. And then you face towards the west. Okay? And then what you look for in the west, you see the summer triangle with the Vega, Deneb, and Altair. Okay? And then we see this uh, line, the dash here, is the ecliptic, the plane of the solar system. Okay? And unfortunately for the sky map, it doesn't show the location of Jupiter and Saturn because it's just below the horizon. But it do, it's very useful to help you orient yourself towards the different uh, direction you want to face. And then you find the constellation. And then you follow that and then you'll find the location of the planets. And, and you also want to try out these um, the phone uh, application which I'm going to show you that you can use on your smartphone, on the tablet, or on the computer. And then you can also get yourself a professional planisphere for your latitude. And it's very useful resources in helping you find the constellation, the stars, the starlight, the phase of the moon, all of that. And here's the list of applications that I recommend. And I highly recommend you try, try all of these. And they're all free, except for Solarium Mobile. But my favorite one is called Skyview Free, or Skyview Light. This particular application is nice because it uses your camera, and then it puts a map with the camera, and so it shows you what you're looking at through the camera. And it's very easy to use. And so I highly try, recommend to try that, and you can try all these other, and then pick an app of your choice. So you go outside, turn on your location, and then you point to the direction you're facing, and then it will highlight what you're looking at. And the fun thing is, it'll even work if it's cloudy. And even if you do it from your own living room, you can still see kind of getting an orientation to where things are in the sky. And then if you point down, you'll see the southern sky. 
but this is a wonderful resource to find the bright stars, the bright planets, the moon. You can look forward in time, back in time. Uh, you can look at the uh, flyover of the International Space Station and all the satellites. Okay, so what a great resource to have and you can use it any time throughout the year. And so I encourage you to try one of these apps. Okay. So this leads to now what's happening on December 21st. And a lot of people have been talking about this where we're going to have what's called the grand conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn. Okay. And the view from Earth Okay, they appear to be very close, okay? and this is things that happen every 20 years, but this year in particular is going to be very special. Okay? So in view from Earth, they appear to be very close, but when uh, you look at the orbit of Jupiter and Saturn, yeah, they're millions of miles away from each other. So let me show you what we're going to see on December 21st. Okay? So you're facing toward the south, and there's Jupiter, there's Moon, and there's Mars, okay? And so you want to face toward the south, first of all, and this is roughly in the neighborhood of about, uh, and to say right about five o'clock, okay? And so that's where you want to first go in at yourself. This is, by the way, a solarium web that you can go to this site and don't have to download it. It, it works right off the uh, internet browser. So there's Jupiter, there is the moon, and there is Mars. And that this is the night for December 21st. So you want to face toward the south, okay? and then you notice that if you go an hour later to about six o'clock, right? uh, five o'clock, six o'clock, and then you face toward the south, you notice a very bright object above the southwest horizon. That's the planet Jupiter. Right? Jupiter is the brightest uh, between Jupiter and Saturn. And so Saturn can be half the brightness. But look what happens when you zoom in. Right? So you notice it's very low. So you need to get, have good southwest clear horizon and hopefully clear skies. Right? So there's Jupiter and there's Saturn. Look at that. Look how close they are. We get tighter and tighter. And they're only 0 0.1 degree apart from each other. And so this will be the first conjunction for uh, since the year 2000. And the closest Jupiter static conjunction since 1623. Only 14 years after Galileo made the first telescope. Okay. And so you see Jupiter and Saturn and the Galilean moons. And this won't happen again until March, March 15th, 2080. We'll still get the conjunction every 20 years. The next one could be uh, 2040, 2060, but 2080 will be the next closed conjunction. Okay, so is it important that you go out and see this? Absolutely, okay. So this is known as the Christmas star, okay, because it's happening in the month of December, okay, but in 1614, German astronomer Johannes Kepler detected that the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn may be what it referred to as the Star of Bethlehem. Others suggest that the three kings would have followed a triple conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn and Venus with a comet to visit baby Jesus. Okay? And so that's what's happening on December 21st. You want to mark your calendar for that. And there's a variety of ways that you can watch this event uh, from home. Uh, you can go to SLOW, S-L-O-O-H, or uh, the Laurel Observatory plan to do some streaming. And I'm sure there are going to be other sites that are going to be streaming this uh, for the event on the 21st. Right? So what a date. And then coming up on December 29th, we have the next full moon, which is known as the Cold Moon. And what this means is that the moon, being full, will be at 68 degrees. And that's its highest point above the southern horizon for the year. And it'll appear to be bright and white. And that's why it's called the cold moon. And then the sun is going to be at 21 degrees. The full moon is going to be at 68 degrees. So it's kind of a teeter-totter okay, between the moon and the sun. Okay? So 
you're out somewhere out away from the city and you're out in the snow field and you go out with the full moon the whole landscape with the snow would be nice and white and bright what a great way to look at the full moon that night okay so with that happy solstice everybody and enjoy the December night sky